Hey everybody, back on the trap line. So this last week we skinned up a few wolverine and so we got the carcass of a female wolverine with a whole lot of fat on it. So in certain areas I will hit and baiting with female wolverine seems to do pretty good. So I have, which I chopped my bait and buried some bait. And there's the chopped up bit that I see this section of line with. So this is a section of line that's been kind of neglected by the wolves this year. So let's see if we can get them over on this side. So, all right. It's a beautiful day. Bright sunshine is probably just a hair under zero. So we had a little bit of snow, about an inch and a half, two inches of snow in some areas. We had some areas blow over pretty hard. So I'm guessing there's going to be places where my wolf traps are all covered up. But that's okay. We got all day to be out here. All day, all right, let's hit it. No Martin here, not even tracks this time around. A little bit of last week's bait down there. Oh yeah, a 110, get a little more bait in here. I actually found a stash of fish eggs that I must have bagged up and stuck away last year. Right there, that's salmon eggs. So let's get a bit of that, bust it up over here and get some animals stinking around this area. Checking it out. Oh, look at that. You see that? Something walked right up. They walked right up and checked it out. Oh, it's a lynx cat, eh? Yeah, look at that. A lynx cat came by and checked it out. He didn't care about my... He didn't care... He didn't care enough to walk over and check out my lynx set. But he definitely... Swung through here and sniffed about. I'm guessing the frozen meat inside this set wasn't exactly what he wanted. So he moved on out of here. Oh yeah, there he goes. He moved right on down. <laughs> Some baits, especially fur, cats don't really care about. So we're going to get this baited up with some, some of the female, female wolverine. Get some of that scent going in there. I think anything I like to munch on this one. All right, we'll bait that and we'll hit it again. This side has been the busy side the last few weeks. 
So we yanked the link set out of there. The ground set for Martin is out of there. We still have our pole set and and the uh, 110 Connor bear set over there. But look what we got here. I've caught, a, caught quite a few different animals in 330s before, but this would be the first Martin that I've ever caught in one. Look at that, he went in there, tried to steal the bait, and this thing closed right on his head. So, look at that. <laughs> oh, that is something else. Not catching Wolverine in those 330s is that 330 is now gummed up and won't hold a Wolverine because it won't snap on him. So, we have a few more wolf traps up ahead. Take a peek by those real quick and then we'll go back and reset that side. And we are gonna wire some bait into that into that cubby. I really don't like wiring bait into a cubby. Uh, you get some refusal sometimes when you wire in when you wire in a cubby. But the Martin here are just really really uh, trying to go after the bigger meat bait. Well, you can tell the difference between uh, meat and fish, even here that's kind of closer to the river. That Martin went straight for the meat and the skin. He didn't even go back to the fish yet, so. And they've got a decent little nose, so he probably smelled it over there. It's just, fish wasn't his first, wasn't the first thing on his list. So that's a pretty Martin. Yeah, that 110 Conda Bear is just sitting right there, undisturbed. Not anything even bothered it at all. So, we'll get some fish eggs, give that a little extra bait, and we'll reset this 330, get that thing set up. We might have to put a Martin box right on the other side of the trail just for Martin, if the Martin gonna keep gumming it up like this. So, let's get this all fixed up. This is actually a pretty dark Martin. The last one we caught here was really light. Oh, this is a beautiful color for a hat. Pretty darn cool. This 330 has been popped here at least four times, so this time it actually caught one. And we'll wire the bait in the back of there to keep the Martin from pulling it out. And more bait, more bait down the trail around. Then we gotta loop around and hit a few snares on this side. And a couple of those traps, the trails are kind of snowed over and blown over, so we'll go ahead and walk those back out again. Tikwitan over there. That's that gray jay. I make sure that when I chop bait that I leave a little bit for these guys. Camp robbers are called. <laughs> he can go ahead and rob as much bait as he wants. He ain't moving nothing too big. There's a little bit of snow now. A little more knee deep. You can see where that lynx walked by a while back. He sunk in about four inches compared to my footstep that goes in almost two feet. So it's pretty darn cool. He's walking with snowshoes on. You see a hard pack right there. Oh, we're grabbing some more, some more dry poles for another 330 set. So we'll grab a couple more, get that other 330 pinned in there. So the one keeps getting gummed up by Martin. So we'll make sure there's a second one. Right. So for, geez, most of this winter now, we've been having a, uh, Martin come in here and rip off bait out of this 330 set. We've even caught them in lynx traps, Martin's traps. So, coming right over here. And the wolves have come to this spot before, so we'll see if they'll come and stick their nose in here. But before I get too far along to it, I have a 330 Connor bear and I've uh, wired it off. I'm actually using a piece of cable and wire and uh, wired it off to the tree back there. 
and I found a piece of limb about this big. I laid it right on the ground and I used that to put the 330 and sit it right on top of there. So that way it kind of sits down, it doesn't can't get pushed down. And then I took two smaller pieces of, of uh, dried willow and I pounded them, I pounded them in just like this. One on this side and then the other in this direction. And I pounded that using my ax. So these are tapped just about as far as they'll go. And that, you can seat right inside the jaws of the 330. Uh, some of the new 330s I have and some of the kind of like nicer ones that jaws close up more evenly, they don't have this space. But this one does just right. And if you were even wanted to have it more secure, you could take a piece of baling wire and close it around on here so this thing cannot move. But something comes along and puts its head in there, this thing still is able to fire. And the best spots I've found are places like under willows, under spruce, and so there's already kind of like a natural little cubby back here. So I took some snow and I'll finish, I'll finish covering this and put the bait back there. And I always make sure that, see this part of the trail is kind of carved out. I'll make sure to dig this out so that the Wolverine kind of walks up, goes right down and into the, into the set right here. Make sure you get yourself some spruce boughs as well. Here it's all this black spruce. It's not the biggest or prettiest spruce boughs, but you just need to cover it up. Okay, keep it set as natural looking as we can. We're gonna cover this whole thing in snow. So I cut a few pieces just from the trail right there. And then we'll use this along with spruce boughs to cover up the entire thing. And then we'll use some snow to fill in the cracks on top. Make sure that no there's no ice and snow right in front of the springs, but this thing is almost there. So now we got it framed in with snow with the chunks of hard snow. Now we fill in. Don't forget you still have bait back there and you want that bait to be uncovered. So don't go too crazy with the amount of snow. Cover up every little bit of it. So here it is. Try to get as natural looking as possible. That the bait is loose enough and not too covered up with snow. So it's still pleasant for the animals to look at. Just like that. All right, now you take your spruce boughs and we'll cover up the front of this. Make sure to level this out a little better in front. And from the top, there it is. Blend it in fairly well with this brush. So this is a little close to the road, but that is a spot you could use. And underneath any one of those bunches of willows, and there's a nice hole back there that might be perfect, but this is right next to the trail and easy to check, so get it brushed in. Okay, we got our 330 Conan Bear Wolverine set finished up. So, this is what it looks like. So, you make sure that there's a hole for the animal to get right up in there. See, the meat is just right there with an eyesight of it. This thing is got it cut down a little bit in front, made it a bit lower, and then all the snow is wrapped around the backside, along with the willows. This whole thing is all the spruce boughs. So right there is a 330 set that's a bit more natural, and as it snows and stuff, it'll hide everything here. I threw some snow to kind of cover up what's going on, but also drive back and forth a couple times pretty natural set that gets very 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 low refusal rate just because there's nothing really man-made except for the metal trap but they don't usually have sets like that built most of the time so Wolverine go ahead and stick his head right in there 
on down the line. All the snow, I had to go back and the trap is right there. I had to trudge back out this trail going to the other side of this little island right here. Snare on one side, open on the other, and this time I tied it into the other side. There's a snow machine trail and game trail that runs back that way, so you can see a lynx walk through here some point in time. But trudged it out. I'll reopen this up. Ha! Uh, I'll be tossing bait over there and I'll drive around the other side and putting bait in a hole on the other. So bit of snow makes a little more work. I'll be worth it in the end. Alright, so that's the tie-in from the other side of the island. I'll so make sure to bury some bait. Hey, one back there. Hopefully that's enough. And some for the birds. That three-way set is in. driving by the spot and trapping by the spot for five six years now and check it out so those sticks right there are part of a lynx cubby at one point in time and back there you can see that there's a sn lynx snare hanging there and one off of this pole right here hanging over there <clears throat> so I'm guessing that they had their trap over here and they had trails wrapped around through here and so that's why that snare is in part of this. Look at that, it's actually, they picked a perfect spot. There is a game trail here, walking back. And it comes from over on that side. So, maybe sometime when links are really abundant, we'll come through here and redo all these sets. But I thought that was pretty cool that they had this little nook right here, kind of out of the wind. And you can see how low the snow is there. So even though the spruce isn't the biggest branched one, this is pretty good for putting a trap under. That's pretty darn cool. An old, an old Lynx set. Cool, and this this kind of setup is perfect too because you get a you get a Lynx in any one of these, and another one comes to cannibalize it. There's a couple other ways to, for them to get caught. Pretty cool. All right, head on down. came through, really dinked around, munching out on bait, spreading out. Alright, caught a wolf around the corner last week, and I was sure hoping that a few more would have rolled over on this side. Check it out. Usually you only get one rabbit's foot, but today they got us a lucky two double catch rabbit foot. <laughs> Something came out and munched him up. We'll get that pulled out. We'll go down around the corner, bait a few sets, complete our loop here, come back and refresh that with a, with a new trap and probably a snare back in there. everybody hard work pays off and oh man it was a I almost thought it was a coyote around the corner his tracks were so small but what it was was a tiny tiny wolverine look at that 
And this right here, this was the uh, the otter set. Uh, so that thing was this hugging right to the top of that pole and right across the trail. And I'm actually gonna take a peek around the corner to see if that wolf trap has anything in it. Can I see? Yeah, this is like what those coyotes are messing around on. Pretty darn cool. Pretty darn cool. So these must have been coyote tracks because you can still see them going back and forth over there. So, wow. Very cool. Number four of the year. So the third one is actually at home and thawing out. And we got us a small little, I'm guessing a female. Look at that, it came straight through and right in there. So the creek is a little ways over that way, about 60 yards over there and goes by. So we'll get this wolverine bagged up, or we'll take it out of the trap and stuff. That's if it's not too frozen. We'll get this one, this uh, 330 re-put in there. So that way it'll be there for next time. And actually, what in the world? The snare is docked down over there. Huh. Look at that, huh? Something knocked the snare down. That was hanging right there. So let's get this replaced, rebaited. And it looks like there's definitely animals just chilling here. So we'll get some more scooped up. So we got the otter set re rebuilt up we bent that we bent the triggers it's a little different to try to make sure it gets caught before getting too far into it well that's the reason that this one got so far into it is this the tiniest little wolverine that i ever caught not very frozen so probably got caught not even within the by the last day i'd say that's where you put together Make sure that we got a slide going down to the slough over there. And more sets around the corner. Another Wolverine down. Pretty good. It's going pretty good this year. Hey, I knocked down my snare over there. This is where we caught, caught the lynx last, last week. Uh, this is where we have a trail set for a lynx. There's something knocked it down. Snare is still a big circle. You got two wolf snares down in there. Let's get this moved out of the way. Huh, nothing on this side. Whole set of lynx tracks. And that's okay. A few more lynx tracks walking back and forth over here. So we put in another trail set. All it is is just a spruce. You leave all the branches on and just make sure there's a clear spot right in the middle with a snare in it. And that works pretty good for links. Just make sure that the, the pole you're connected to is thick enough to handle it. Pass by pretty quick in a snare, but if a wolverine or something gets in there, you gotta make sure that that thing is thick enough to, to handle a bit of a beating. A bit of beating. You seen coyote tracks coming over the, towards this side, but they dipped on and off the trail completely random and stayed away from all the sets. So throw more bait and keep on going. Gotta make sure to throw some bait right over here. Huh, look at that. That is pretty cool. There's a nice little hole over there. I think we'll let them pack that trail down a little better next time through. We'll stick a conna bear right in that hole. Today, I'm wearing a different pair of mitts. So these are the other dessert that my wife made for me. So these are moose skin mitts. 
similar similar to the old pair I have except these are significantly larger so with mitts it's always best to have a skinnier pair of gloves inside there but this one can go all the way up over top of my jacket and they're big enough that I can actually fit larger size gloves so when it is like 60 below out I can fit my full size gloves right down in here and I'm good to go so these are much much more layered up than the other pair and I think my wife put a different waterproofing layer as well as some some kind of material inside there so again thank you to my wife for the amazing amazing sewing work so where they stitch two pieces together they put another layer and that helps keep it really waterproofed from the snow and stuff making it inside there so this pair is oh, two years old and has a nice thick braided yarn yarn piece that goes around my neck and yep keeping my hands warm going down the trail all right guys uh no luck on this on this animal walking down the trail so we're spinning back around and hit the different corner and headed back to the village uh one martin and one beat up little wolverine down so we'll see if wolves hit us on the other side This is where we caught the wolf the other day. The trap was right over there. There were a couple of different uh, wolf trails. He dragged the toggle over, wrapped it around the tree over there, got tied up. Uh, the chief called me up. The other chief called me up and said, hey, they got a wolf up there. So I came up. Me and my brother came up, dispatched him, got him back to town. He skinned and boarded right as we spake. All right, on down the way. Got a wolverine cubby set there and looks like we had a couple lynx walk straight up to it definitely snubbed it and then walked away right on its own track so with lynx it seems like only the real big boys really walk on the same track so that's pretty cool there's probably a pretty big lynx back there somewhere more bait and look at that they're starting to pack down this little spot too over here they got some snares on both sides, but with lynx, uh, they, their feet don't drop in the snow, so some of those snares have to be lifted. Pretty cool though. Pretty cool. See, even that one's a little too low now. But, everything's seeming to light this all. Stump right there, let's put something there. Let's give it a whirl. <laughs> Hey everybody, back in town, 
Good day on the line, a lot of lynx tracks, a uh, set of coyote tracks, the Martin, Martin tracks that led to this one, and the only damaged wolverine I think I've ever caught. So I don't think I've ever caught a wolverine like this before. But we'll salvage what we can. Another beautiful day, bright sunshiny day. The dogs are barking. And it's time to say goodnight, guys. God bless, and we'll see you again next time.